Using the magic loop method for knitting any sort of small circumference is easy from the absolute beginning, and that means the casting on. So let me just walk you through the cast on we're going to use while we're learning how to knit mittens. Now, I use a long tail cast on, and I want to make a point to you. Your cast on has got to be loose, okay? If it's not, just like if you're not loose on the cuff of a sock and then you can't get the sock over your foot, you're going to have the same problem getting your mitten over your hand if you cast on too tightly. All right, having said that, let me just show you something. I'm going to use a long tail cast on for my mitten. And as I do this, sometimes what I see happening with uh, someone who's a new knitter is that they'll get the cast on correct and then they're so afraid that the needle is going to slide out that they scrunch it up really, really tightly like this. And you can see where that starts ending up being a ridiculously tight cast on. What I'm talking about is just almost what you might think of as being sloppy, just short of sloppy. Here, see you've got the first two stitches and look, I don't pull very tightly on those. They're pretty loose. Then I do the next one, still very loose, not pulling on the yarn at all, just sort of laying it and lightly pulling it into place. Okay, for my sock with worsted weight wool, now remember, I am a very, very loose knitter, so I tend to use a very small needle than what's called for, for worsted weight. So I'm actually using a number four on our um, options needles. So I've got a Harmony Wood tip, number four, and I'm going to cast on 40 stitches. I'll get back to you after I've done that. All right, I have cast on my 40 nice loose stitches. I'm gonna show you how to now make your entire circle join using the magic loop. First thing you do is you take all of those cast on stitches and you move them into the center of your cable of your circular needle. Now I like to then kind of do a flip over so that the part where I was casting on is in the back, okay? The farthest away from me and the part that's still unattached essentially is closer to me. All right, then what you do is you count half the stitches. In my case, it would be 20. So I'm two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. I then bend the cable. That's why having a flexible cable is such a great thing. Pull it out until I have both of the needle tips at the other end. So I have half the stitches on one needle tip essentially in the back or the farthest away from me and the other half of the stitches, see, look at this. Here, now don't worry, you've got this huge, huge loop here, but that's gonna be basically put in half later. So now I've got half of the stitches and I make sure that all of the little bumps of the cast on are facing down so I know I haven't twisted it. And then, now that I've done that, I pull the back needle out till I have about half of the amount of loop as I used to have. And then I bring it forward and from now on, it's just as though you were knitting with just these needles, okay? Don't really pay attention to anything else. What you're gonna do is you're going to take the cast on part, the tails. Now, there are a couple of tricks I just want to share with you that are really great to know. One, when you are making your join and two, when you're casting, when you're knitting ribbing in general. The first is, so you're just bringing this forward as though you were getting ready to knit the next stitch and you've got the yarn and you're ready to go. What I like to do is I knit the first two stitches with both strands of my long tail cast on. The reason I do that is it just kind of makes everything much more snug. Once I've knit those first two stitches, and in this case I'm gonna be doing a knit two purl two ribbing, I will drop the tail and continue with the purl, the two purl stitches with just one strand. Here's my other trick. When I'm doing ribbing, 
I knit into the back of the knit stitches. In other words, normally you would go like this to make a knit stitch. You would go from the left to the right in the front and you would make your stitch. That's fine, but what happens is when you move from your knits to your purls, you have a little bit of extra yarn and it gets sloppy and I don't like that. So what I do is I stick my needle in the back from down below up through the back of that knit stitch and I actually knit that way. And it makes the stitch a little twisted and that pulls all of the extra yarn a bit tight and it makes the ribbing not so sloppy. So I'm going to knit the first stitch through the back with both strands of my cast on. I'm going to knit through the back of the second one as a knit stitch using both strands of my cast on. Okay, now I'm ready for the two purl stitches. I drop, you know, that little tail. See my tail just kind of hangs down there. I pick up the strand that's still attached to the ball of yarn and just like normal I go into purling too. Then when I get to the knit, I knit into the back of those two stitches to tighten everything up between the knit stitches and the purl stitches. And remember all you're doing is going through the back. Instead of going around from left to right, you're going from right to left and into the back of the stitch wrapping the yarn just like normal to make a knit. Then I'm purling two stitches. All right, let me continue until I get to the end of this first half of stitches and I'll show you how to make the turn to do the stitches that are sitting on the back on the cable waiting to be knit and purled.